I did say that. Allow Senator yeah, Wilson thanks, then. Thanks, yeah, yeah, thanks for yeah. reminding me. I think you did say Appreciate it. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, I've, I've got a few questions, but I'll try and get through them fairly quickly. Um, in relation to the Murray, uh, the inquiry, yes, the uh, recommendations yesterday, I was interested in recommendation 22, which uh, you, you did mention in your introductory speech, Mr Medcraft, around um, introducing product intervention powers. And I suppose my question was to Mr Tanzer, you uh, were very... Uh, you provided time the other day for our Senate inquiry into forestry management investment schemes. And I think at the end of a, a very uh, very good chat, productive chat, we came to the conclusion that um, while we couldn't necessarily prove deceptive and misleading conduct or fraudulent behaviour in relation to these, these schemes, um, a lot of them weren't viable and weren't investor grade. Uh, would this kind of uh, new power for ASIC give you the ability I'm asking you to look in hindsight here, to have stepped in and looked at that kind of product and yep. said, this is, this is not, this is too high risk or it's going to cause consumer detriment. Yes, I can only give you a degree of um, assurance on that, certainly because I don't only have to look in hindsight, but I've also got to look forward I'm to um, what the legislation will actually say. Speaking, but, but the um, recommendation put forward by the FSI, which has been accepted by the government, at least in terms of further consultation around this, um, was that in cases of demonstrated consumer detriment, ASIC should have power uh, to intervene with respect to a product, but for a particular period of time to give the parliament effectively time to mm. deal with the problem also. Um, and the to rehearse for the committee, and very briefly what I was saying before the forestry inquiry, uh, the forestry managed investment schemes uh, the history of forestry managed investment schemes has not been a happy one with respect to their investment um, outcomes. Uh, that's by no means a condemnation of every scheme by any means. There are successful schemes, but there are some difficulties and well demonstrated uh, difficulties with forestry investment schemes. And in particular, um, I did um, indicate that um, from ASIC's perspective, we've been a strong supporter of the product intervention power, and it's the sort of thing that you could see in that type of area where we have done a lot of research about the detriment that's been caused. We have worked very hard on improving disclosure, uh, on improving warnings, on trying to get investors to foc on, focus on the key investments. Mm. I indicated that there were two key things that were relevant to that. One was the work that's been done through FOFA, Yep. and the ban on um, commissions, and the other was product intervention power. OK. So uh, the government's wording, it's, it's fairly general in their in what they released. They've, they basically said they agree to give ASIC, uh, agree to provide ASIC with a financial product intervention power to enable it to modify or, if necessary, ban harmful financial products where there's a risk of consumer detriment. Uh, what, what would harmful mean, essentially? I know we've got to get to the details of this is going to be legislation. Presumably, this has got to be explored again by the committee. But is it? Could it mean non-viable products like we've we've seen this catastrophe with four or five billion dollars lost for an asset class like forestry management investment schemes? But it looks like it might be legal. But it certainly look, looks harmful to me. So that's the government's indicated that there'll be detailed consultation on the scope and nature of the, the powers yeah. by, I think, mid-2016. And I imagine that will be one of the, one of the particular issues that's worth, um, worth discussing. I mean, as I mentioned, with respect to forestry managed investment schemes, mm. um, what we certainly saw following the global financial crisis was that the predominant model for many of those schemes, which relied on upfront fees coming in from new investors did not prove to be viable once right. those new investors dried up and that the working capital was not there. Mm. Um, now, we worked pretty hard on financial resource requirements. We worked very hard on a range of uh, conditions that we could impose on how the land was held. Um, but ultimately, those models proved to be not viable mm. um, once the financial crisis hit. And um, it, it does suggest that type of environment is a certain, I think it's certainly the type of thing that is well worth considering uh, when you consider things like a product intervention power. And just, well, sorry, just on that point, I, I think it's important to note that the product intervention power, the discussion about its use is not just in relation to targeting high risk or products that have a higher investment risk. 
It's about where you have a fundamental misalignment yeah. of risk. And I think that's what you saw with the forestry products, but that can Correct. also arise with um, insurance products, uh, yeah. with uh, credit products of one sort or another, where you have a product that people understand offers them A, but they're actually getting B, and there are, mm. that appears to be a systemic problem. That's maybe where the well, product intervention power may be. It's very good to hear, and I'm, look, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing uh, the detail yeah. around these negotiations. Sorry, consultations and legislation. And the we've, two together we've got to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen again. Yeah. Mm. Um, Perhaps one, one further comment, and that is there is another significant recommendation coming out of the FSI government response, and that's around product design and distribution. A good, was, was my next question. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> perhaps Those, if we could continue, two, please. Yeah. The two are paired. Yeah. The two are paired. The that, two well, are they paired. are, yeah, but I'm, because I, I, I know this, if I could just add before you continue, um, the there was a lot of media speculation, and there was a bit of an elephant in the room leading into the Murray, uh, mm. certainly into his interim report, that he might look at the vertically integrated business mm. models of the banks and the culture around selling products to their customers, and this seemed to be suggested as the solution to not going to that extreme of actually forcing them to sell off their financial planning arms or their manufacturing part of their business. Mm. Um, so I'd also be interested to hear your views on whether you think this will help solve the culture that we've often talked about in, the, in these financial services firms. Well, I, I think uh, as I read the recommendations, it's really about making sure that uh, the people to whom products are directed uh, are suitable to receive those products, not at an individual level, but at a sort of group level. So if there were a situation where uh, products were being directed to a group of people for whom those products are unsuitable, then under this sort of obligation it may well be an issue. Okay. Uh, so I, I do think the big game changer these days is is the power of the crowd. I think for good or for bad, um, you, you know, basically you do the wrong thing by your customer, the whole world could be told very quickly. And I think that's going to shape behavior. And I think that combined with digital disruption um, is gonna be very powerful. So I think and if, you, if you wanna probably argue it's a market force, market force is if you want it really changing quite dramatically. So I do think, okay. I think things are, you know, digital plus the power of the crowd well, combination. If I could also say that I've, I've asked, um, through the scrutiny of financial advice that Senator Dassiari has chaired, I have asked the major banks, the CEOs, about this recommendation 21, mm. ah. and have they started any discussions with yourselves or the government? Mm. Uh, and do they know anything about it? And they said, no, that, let's, yeah. let's mm. bed down uh, for Senator, and we'll get to that stuff later. Uh, again, it me, we're having a we don't know much about it and how it's going to work. Yeah, there's to be further consultation on uh, this particular proposal, which I understand will occur in the first half of next calendar yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the words in the government's um, uh, information do trouble me a bit, and I'm sure um, Senator Dastriari has nightmares around Senator Cormann inserting this kind of clause in. Uh, this information, implementation of this recommendation will be subject to detailed consultation with stakeholders to ensure that the scope of this obligation enhances consumer protection without undue burden on the industry. Yeah. Uh, uh, I hope that's not code for yeah, uh, not taking any strong action. Uh, again, I think, uh, and I mean, obviously these are policy matters for government, but sometimes with these sorts of obligations, you've got to think about, well, do they apply at the individual transaction level or do they apply at a slightly higher level? So for example, in marketing, um, do you look at marketing to each and every consumer who might receive the marketing or do you act, ask a higher level question that says something like, well, what's the group, the broad group that the marketing was directed at? And, and is that an appropriate group to receive those sorts of products? Hmm. So, I, I, you know, there, there are complex policy questions around those sorts think, of issues. Uh, I think that these, pr this, the, these two combined actually have the potential to actually reduce burden on business because mm. at the moment business does their uh, PDS and their financial services guide, which probably nobody reads. Um, so having a, a system like this where it's actually back to them to have those, those principles to make sure that the, the right customers are actually look, getting the product does allow you to start thinking about perhaps in a digital environment, creating something that's actually more um, 
fit for purpose, which mm. actually people can use, which are benefit for both business and for consumers. So I do think why I said earlier that the, when you're th thinking this through, it actually provides some probably good opportunities for everyone, frankly. Yeah. Um, could just quickly a couple of questions on uh, recommendation 24. Um, you, your organisation, I think is the only one who's done some work on uh, some survey work around commissions in the life insurance industry. Mm. Yes. Were you, were you disappointed that we haven't seen a ban or some sort of mandatory cap or regulation placed on commissions? Uh, or you, do you, you no, no, well, we're, we're, we're pleased that, um, that there is uh, a lot of work being undertaken in, in this area. There was the announcement by uh, uh, the former Assistant Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, about the indus proposed industry package to address some of the problems in the life insurance sector and to raise standards. And that's obviously r continuing to be the subject of um, a lot of work and the government has announced that it supports those proposed reforms uh, and will now look at how they can best be implemented. So uh, the, that's, that's an important, going to be an important step forward for the life insurance sector. Okay, so could you just very, very quickly tell us what those um, reforms were that were proposed by the industry themselves? Uh, without um, running through all of them, they involved no. a, a change to the re, um, remuneration model to move from a high upfront commission right. Uh, to a so-called hybrid commission, which has mm. uh, an upfront um, uh, around 60% uh, ultimately, with an ongoing commission of 20%, and a transition to that model over three years to reduce the conflicts that arise from a very high upfront model. A so-called clawback arrangement to discourage um, inappropriate switching or churning. The introduction of a uh, code of conduct, the introduction of a requirement for insurers to uh, enable advisors to not only um, offer uh, commission-based life insurance policies but policies um, without a commission. We think that's quite important. That's mandatory. Uh, so those are all part of mm. the package um, that was put up forward at that time. Um, a ban on other volume-based payments consistent yes. with um, FOFA, which is, which is obviously, again, to address the conflicts issue, and a review in 2018. Okay. So that, I, I'm, I, that's, not a, that's not an exhaustive list, but that, right. I think, captures okay. many of the key Th elements. Th thank you. Yeah. Uh, in relation to um, recommendation 20, um, looking at uh, st standards, I think it's 20, if I've got it right. Um, comprehensive credit reporting is 20. Oh, no, is that no, the no, one no, you're talking about? Be. 25, sorry. Um, is there still scope there, Mr. Medcraft, for a national exam of some sort or another? Uh, you and well, I, I, I very much believe on the very, much, very much on the agenda. Good. Very much on the agenda, I believe. Yes. yes. So the industry's come around to accepting. My, my feeling from the previous inquiries is the industry's been. Well, various parts of the industry have been opposed to a national exam, but that's... Well, I think the government has now agreed to a package that um, includes, amongst other things, the degree and exam, a con uh, continuous professional development and a professional year, Correct. amongst okay. other things. So the exam is going to be part and parcel of the okay. regime, and, and it, that's I a positive. I think it's quite important the exam has said it's something that is internationally recognised as well. So similar to US style? I think it's important that it's, you know, the standard is we can, you know, we've got to live trust and confidence. Mm. So. Okay. okay. I certainly don't want to have to go through that again. Neither do I. No. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> much fun at all. No. Um, could I, as Senator Dastieri asked about the capability review, just very, two last questions, Chair. Um, recommendation 30, uh, comp talking at the comp about the competition, uh, strengthening the focus on competition in the financial system. Mm -hmm. Is there any crossover here with what ASIC, uh, sorry, with what ACCC does in their mandate? Why, why introduce mm -hmm. this to... So okay. they, uh, I'll pass over to yeah. Peter Look, a, a, a good um, question. Again, we will have to uh, wait and see exactly what the legislative proposal involves, but the, 
the concept, as far as we understand, uh, has not to, it's not for ASIC to become the competition regulator. Mm. Uh, we wouldn't be approving mergers or undertaking that sort of activity. Rather, it's to formally introduce competition considerations into our decision making and our objectives. Uh, this was something that was introduced into the UK Financial Conduct Authority a few years back so as to um, ensure that uh, we can, uh, if you like, send a signal in, a, in our decision making, whether it comes to granting relief or looking at what sort of action we might take to remedy a market problem, that competition is an issue that we need to consider very clearly when we, when we do that. Okay, thank you. Um, lastly, just uh, uh, Mr Medcraft, I notice you've made some media comments um, after the BBY, but at Buckridge and Young collapse yep. around uh, changes to legislation, I think it's Corporations Act, Section 981D. Um, just in relation to, to BBY, um, when it went into administration, uh, failing to pay its creditors on time, the administrators found that money in particular trust accounts was missing. It is understood that this was a result of margin calls on derivative products and that there's a loophole at the moment that allows uh, investors' money in trust to be accessed by uh, margin calls. Um, what, was, what was your role in monitoring this? Could you step us through why you'd like to see legislation changed? Certainly. Uh, Cathy, do you want to take? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'd, we'd like to see the legislation changed because it's particularly a gap we see in relation to what we call over-the-counter derivatives so that um, actually there is a capacity under the legislation for mon client monies to be used for hedging and other purposes um, and, and doesn't necessarily have to directly relate to that particular client, hedging that particular client's position um, and, and also um, the, there's been a practice that's developed of um, actually client, many client documents um, containing an agreement that an organisation can actually more broadly use client monies. So we'd like to mm. see the legislation uh, change so, to be more like a, a, a traditional trust account, as, as we would, as people would commonly understand so that. Could, could you explain why this loophole exists at the moment, that where you can get on trust accounts where you can have um, I, 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 um, it's it, The legislation's been that way for some time, um, and so there's there's no doubt a, a history to it. That, but I'm I'm not in a I'm not familiar with the, the history of it. Um, Is there any other way to stop it apart from changing legislation for that kind of thing? Well, I'm, obviously, business schools could a, apply a different practice if they if they are interested in applying a different practice. But um, uh, no, having the freedom to use client money in this way um, would obviously be quite relevant to the economics of um, particular business models. So. There may be good business reasons why a business doesn't uh, chooses to to use the provisions of the law um, mm. in the way they're able to. I think yesterday the government did foreshadow, in connection with um, its response to the FSI, that they are looking at adjusting some of the some of these provisions. So we're we're looking forward to to that happening. Oh, so yeah. specifically, this is what yeah, the, yeah. the um, I think the government did announce in the FSI. So I can look at the money. Um, they, they announced client the handling. Client uh, handling yeah. monies. So they did announce that uh, there were a number of additional matters mm. that were announced, and that the, this uh, this was one that was covered. Client the client monies uh, issue is, I think, is pretty high priority for the government. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. That